Uh, let's get back to the main story of the week here. Israeli athletes called to the front lines to fight. Uh, and the Isra uh, Israeli military rallying more than 300,000 military reservists for duty. Among them, members of the Israeli Olympic bobsled team, days before they're scheduled to leave for their training. A.J. Edelman is a member of the Israeli Olympic bobsled team. Uh, four of his own teammates have now been called to duty. Um, A.J., before we get to your team, your sport, I just want to extend my heartfelt condolences for the nightmare your country and people are enduring. Um, it's got to be overwhelming. What have these last six days been like for you? I think for every Israeli across the world, it has been a, a state of shock, uh, a state of consistent questioning as to whether to feel sad, anger, or resolute. And I think there's a, a mixture of all three of those right now in, in every Israeli across the globe. And as we mentioned off the top, AJ, you're on the Israeli Olympic bobsled team. You were supposed to leave for Lake Placid to train for the Olympic Games. Your teammates have now been called to the front lines by the military to serve. You're close with them. These are your guys. Uh, your reaction when they got called up and, and what does that now mean for competition moving forward? So for context, in Bob said we have push athletes and we have a pilot. I am the pilot of the team, so I manage uh, my team. I run my team under the blanket of the Israeli Bob Sudden Skeleton Federation and the Israeli Olympic Committee. For me as a pilot, the boys who sit in the back of my sled, I call them my boys because they become very, very close. Their hands, their lives are in, are in my hands, and I place my trust in them. We gel as brothers. We consistently train as brothers. know that sorry you don't have to apologize um i feel a constant uh sense of responsibility towards them every day of the season every day of the off season and now they're protecting me and they're protecting all of us and um and so sometimes it feels a little uh tough as someone who personally i moved to israel too late to serve I moved to Israel when I was too old. And so to watch them from afar and to talk to them from afar while they're in harm's way and protecting all of us is something that I'm very proud of. It's something that, that you know, I'll, I'll never be able to, to thank them enough for. And now your life is in their hands. And uh, I know and understand you talked to your teammates before they had to unplug and, and go to the front lines to protect their people. and. And, and your country. What were some of your final words to your teammates, if you don't mind sharing? So I've spoken to uh, four of our teammates are, are in a mixture of cyber command or on the ground. Ward is a very special member of our team. Our team has a number of Arab Druze members. Druze are an ethnic and religious minority in the Middle East. Uh, Ward, who you're seeing on the screen with me, he's a very, very important person in my life. We've been together for four years, and uh, although he's not Jewish, I sent him a Jewish prayer uh, with his name. We were, you know, chatting like like any brothers would, and I just, you know, I'm so proud of him. And I, I, I said, I'm so proud of you uh, mm -hmm. for what you're doing and how you're protecting our country, because for years I've known of the service that he's given in some very harsh environments, and. Uh, for someone who has been building his life and representing his community and preparing for the Olympics in 2026, he has now put all of that aside in order to protect our values and our freedoms and protect civilians. And I'm just, I'm very proud of all of the boys. Yeah, well, I um, I can't imagine, AJ, what you're going through, not only what's happening uh, in Israel, but also this is a sport that I imagine you have poured every day of your entire life childhood, adulthood existence into, um, and to not know what comes next, I know is just agonizing. We thank you for your time this morning. Please keep us posted on, on how they're doing, and, and I hope you hear back from them soon, AJ. Sure, if, if I may, just before we leave. Please. Um, if everyone in Israel knows someone impacted by the terrible, terrible tragedies that have unfolded. Um, I would ask, for those who are listening, there's a lot of, um, Israelis have noted it, there's a lot that has come out to bear, to, to lay bare in the last few days, the striking excuses for, um, for the atrocities that, that have taken place. And I would just ask each and every one of you before taking a side, 
to ask yourselves, if, is there anything that you could have done in your life? Is there anything that anyone could have done in their lives to, to excuse someone else to come into your home and your neighbor's home and to dismember children and to kidnap your children from their beds? There is no two sides to this. There is no equivalency. And so it's been very distressing, I think, to Israelis and to people who, who side with humanity to see people standing in the streets and saying, gas the Jews, send them back. This is not an Arab-Israeli conflict. This is a conflict between humanity and barbarism. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.